Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. On this week's episode, we bring you Animar, Soul of the Elements with a $100 budget. If you're new to our channel, we're gonna go over the general strategy of the deck. We won't go over every single card. We do include a deck list down below if you wanna check out the full deck list. Animar, Soul of the Elements is a blue, a red, and a green for a legendary creature that has protection from white and black. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Animar, Soul of the Elements. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter on Animar. So Animar has built-in protection from white and black spells, which is important. A lot of the single targeted removal spells in Commander do come from white and black spells. We are going to build Animar based on his plus one plus one counter strategy, where we're going to play creature spells and he's going to get larger, and every creature spell that we play after that is going to be reduced by one for every plus one plus one counter on Animar. There's some combos that you can build with Animar, which we'll go over later in the video, that make Animar very strong. We are gonna build this as a creature heavy deck with a combo strategy built into it. With Animar, we are gonna rely heavily on his cost reduction effect. So we do include some creatures that do have a high converted mana cost because we know that we will be able to play those creatures for a reduced rate. And cheating mana cost is one of the best things that you can be doing in the game. We also have a morph sub theme in the deck. Morph creatures work well in this deck because if your Animar has three counters on it, you can play out your morph creatures for free. And we do have several combos in the deck that work well with Animar's cost reduction. We'll go over all of those later in the video, and we do have a secondary win con in the deck as well. Strengths of the deck, Animar does have protection and having protection from black and white. A lot of the single targeted removal spells do come in those colors, so your Animar is gonna have some built-in protection. Cheating mana cost is really strong, and Animar does have that ability attached to him, and he is able to combo off very quickly. Weaknesses, any stacks effects are gonna be tough for Animar, and Torpor Orb, where it cuts off your enter the battlefield abilities are also gonna be tough to battle through and any board wipe. Since we're playing over 50 creatures in this deck, board wipes are gonna be hard to beat. Let's start with this deck tech by talking about some of the ramp that we have in this deck. Now in this deck, we are prioritizing creature ramp over spell ramp because we do want to focus on Animar getting counters. So we didn't include some ramp spells that you may be used to in this color combination. We wanted to put those on creatures instead. So we have Rishkar, Pima Renegade, and when it enters the battlefield, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And each creature you control with a counter on it has tap to add a green to your mana pool. So if you play this spell and you have your Animar on the battlefield, field you can give the plus one plus one counter to Animar and Animar will also get a plus one plus one counter when this enters the battlefield so you'll start off with your Animar having three power and toughness which is really good and since we do have a lot of ways of adding counters to the deck being able to tap your creatures for green mana is really nice and then we have Sakura Tribelder you can sack him to search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped and then there's Incubation Druid which is a new one out of Ravnica Allegiance that you can tap to add a color of any type that a land you control could produce but if it has a plus one plus one counter on it you can add three mana of that type instead then we have somber walled sage which taps for three mana of any color and you can spend that mana only to cast creature spells and then there's beast caller savant and rattle claw mystic which both tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool then we have a couple of creatures that when they enter the battlefield they're going to search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped in Farhaven Elf and Wood Elves. And Elvish Rejuvenator does the same thing, except it only looks at the top five cards of your library. You are gonna hit a land card with this more often than not. Ways of drawing cards in this deck are very important. We do have a couple of cards that are draw engines, and whenever we play a creature spell, we can draw a card. So we have Guardian Project, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card. Life Crafter's Bestiary lets you scry at the beginning of your upkeep, and whenever you cast a creature spell, you can pay a green and draw a card. And then Zendikar Resurgent, lets you double your mana, and also whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Then we have Primordial Sage, Beast Whisperer, and Soul of the Harvest. Each of these are creatures that have the ability that whenever you cast a creature spell, you can draw a card. And Soul of the Harvest is a little bit different, and it says whenever it enters the battlefield, you can draw a card. So it does have to actually enter the battlefield. If you are up against a Torpor Orb, it will not trigger the Soul of the Harvest. 
And then we have Elemental Bond. Whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw a card. Most of the creatures in our deck do have power three or greater. All of these cards are really powerful in this deck. If you're able to get one of these onto the battlefield, you can start chaining together some pretty crazy turns. Since we don't have a whole lot of interaction in this deck and we're relying mostly on creatures, it is important to make sure that our creatures don't get countered. We did include a couple of ways to ensure that our creature spells resolve, and that's with Rhythm of the Wild and Surak Dragon. Dragonclaw. They both have the ability that creature spells you control can't be countered. Rhythm of the Wild also gives your creatures riot so they enter the battlefield with your choice of haste or a plus one plus one counter. So that does have some synergy with Animar. We want to have our Animar enter with plus one plus one counters. And then Cirque Dragonclaw also gives our creatures trample. Creatures with morph work really well with Animar because if your Animar has three counters on it, you can play the creature for its morph cost for free. One thing to note is it does not reduce the morph cost of the creature. We included the morph creatures that had the best abilities at the lowest price. So we have Brine Elemental, and when it's turned face up, each opponent skips his or her untap step. Then there's Willbender. When it's turned face up, you can change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. And then Mistfire Weaver gives us some additional protection. And when it's turned face up, target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Then we have Hooded Hydra. This creature enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And when it dies, you can put a one one green snake creature token onto the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter it had. As Hooded Hydra is turned face up, you can put five plus one plus one counters on it. Then there's Stratus Dancer. And this is an important one in this deck. When it is turned face up, you can counter target instant or sorcery spell it's important because this can get around the stack so if your opponent tries to counter one of your win conditions you can flip up your stratus dancer and your opponent will not be able to interact with the flip of the stratus dancer and cannot counter it it is an uncounterable counter which is very powerful and then we have den protector when it's flipped face up you can return target card from your graveyard to your hand so this is a cheaper eternal witness in the deck the next two creatures give us some additional value in the deck and the first one is Prime Speaker Zagana, and she's going to enter the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters on it, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And the most important thing is when it enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to Prime Speaker Zagana's power. Now with Animar, our Animar is going to grow larger over the course of the game. So if you play Prime Speaker Zagana, she will be able to draw you a good amount of cards. On average, you can expect to get three to five cards off of this. And then Tishana Voice of Thunder has power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. It does give you the ability that you have no maximum hand size. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control. We have a couple of creature spells that are gonna enable us to counter our opponent's spells. And we do want them on creatures instead of on spells because it's gonna help us buff our Animar. So we have Frilled Mystic and Mystic Snake, which do the exact same thing when they enter the battlefield, you can counter target spell. And then we have Keru Spell Snatcher, which is a little bit different. It does have more and when it's turned face up you can counter target spell and if that spell is countered you get to exile it instead and you get to actually cast that card without paying its mana cost this is a nice way to steal one of your opponent's spells colorless creatures are really good in this deck because if your animar has enough counters on it you can play these spells for free so we did include a couple of value artifact creatures in this deck uh, first one being duplicate and duplicate has imprint so whenever it enters the battlefield you can exile uh, target creature and it does have a second ability that it gets the power and toughness and creature types of the card exiled which isn't as important but this does function as a creature removal spell then we have burnished heart three colorless you can sack it to search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped again this is nice if you're able to play this for free it does give us some additional ramp in this deck which we are looking for and then we do have a couple of eldrazi spells the cheaper ones in artisan of Kozilek. Whenever you cast a spell, you can return a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it does have Annihilator 2, which whenever it attacks, the defending player is going to sack two permanents, so that is very powerful. And then we have Oblivion Sower. When you cast it, target opponent 
exiles the top four cards of their library, then you can put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the battlefield under your control. One thing to note here is if your opponent has any other land cards exiled before you play this spell, you can get all of those lands as well. So it's any lands from exile that that player owns, not specific to those four that you exile. Teamer Sabretooth is a powerful creature in this deck and any green deck that can play it. It has the ability that you can play one in a green to return another creature you control the owner's hand. If you do, it gains indestructible until end of turn. In this deck, we do want to return creatures back to our hand to replay them to get their enter the battlefield abilities and also to grow our Animar larger. Not only that, but Teamer Sabretooth does provide us some additional protection. If your opponent goes to remove one of your key creatures, you can pay the one in a green to return it to its owner's hand. So it does save your creature. This is a very powerful card in this deck. The main combo in this deck revolves around creatures that can return other creatures or themselves back to your hand. This is going to help you grow your Animar larger and large enough to where you're able to win the game. Shrieking Drake, Dreamstalker, and Mana War. If you have at least two counters on your Animar, you can play these for just one blue mana. And when they enter the battlefield, you can return a creature you control to its owner's hand. So you would just return these creatures back to your hand and keep playing them for a blue mana. Equilibrium has a similar effect and it's an enchantment that whenever you cast a creature spell you can pay one to return target creature to owner's hand. So this has the same ability but it's on an enchantment. The best of all of those creatures is Ancestral Statue. It's a colorless artifact creature that costs four and when it enters the battlefield return a non-land permanent you control the owner's hand. So if your Animar has four plus one plus one counters on it you can play the Ancestral Statue for free and you can keep playing it to get your Animar infinitely large to where he can one-shot an opponent, or you can use it as a combo with Impact Tremors. And Impact Tremors is an enchantment that whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. So as you continuously play your Ancestral Statue, it's just gonna deal one damage to each opponent, so you are gonna kill them all right on the spot with Impact Tremors. We did include an alternate win con in this deck with Simic Ascendancy. It's an enchantment that you can pay one in a Simic to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if it has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. With this deck, you do have a lot of ways of putting plus one plus one counters, not only on Animar, but on other creatures you control. So having an extra win con in this deck that could win you the game if you're other win cons fail is important. Let's go through the mana base of this deck. Based on feedback I received on my last video, some of you guys wanted me to go through the mana base, so I will be trying this in future videos. Let me know what you think down below in the comments if you want us to continue doing this in future videos. First up, we have three lands that you can tap and sacrifice them to search your library for a basic land and put them onto the battlefield tapped in Jun Panorama, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expanse. Then we have Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Frontier Bivouac. These are each gonna tap for a mana of any color in our commander's color identity. The only difference is Exotic Orchard, your opponent has to have those lands in order to produce those colors, which most often than not, they will have all colors represented. And then we have two bounce lands in Simic Growth Chamber and Grohl Turf. Um, when these enter the battlefield, you return a land you control to owner's hand, and then you can tap them to add a green and a blue or a green and a red to your mana pool. A couple of important lands in this deck and, and ones that I think are worth including is Guild Mage's Forum and Opal Palace. You can filter a mana of any color to your mana pool by tapping one and tapping the land. And if you spend it to cast your commander or a multicolored creature spell, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Opal Palace does do it for every time it's been cast from the command zone, so that can add some extra counters over the course of the game. And you do want your Animar to enter the battlefield with more plus one plus one counters if you can. And then for basics, we have 12 forests, eight islands, and three mountains. Forests are the most important in this deck. We do have a lot of creatures that ramp us up and they're all green. And then islands 
Island is, is the second most important land. We do have a lot of blue spells and there is a heavy Simic theme in the deck. If you liked watching our video today and want to see more Budget Commander content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell notification icon. It will notify you of all of our videos that we post in the future. Another way that you can support our channel directly is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash budget EDH. There's a link down below in the description and for as little as a dollar per month, you'll have access to enter into all of our giveaways, including giveaways for decks that we create from deck techs, merch, and sponsored product. Check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video today. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Reddit. We'll see you next time.